Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Prayers here from St. Mags this morning. You're very welcome. How are we this morning? Let's wait for people to come on online. Good morning, Rosie. Hey, James. Okay, you guys are quick off the mark. Morning, Pete. Apologies, I was a minute late. My phone, the phone I was using for the Lectio decided it needed to update at that moment. Morning, Mark and Virginia. Good morning, young man. Pete, uh, Pete, thank you so much. I don't believe you, but yeah, thank you. Morning, Reg. Morning, Claire. Claire back from her morning swim. Morning, Wendy and Elaine. Morning, if you're watching this and you're not um, saying hello, you're just kind of in on the background, you're very, very welcome. This is just our simple root, um, pattern, if you like, of morning prayer and evening prayers. And it's just it's a good way to start the day. Um, I've actually got family with, with me today, which is lovely. I worked yesterday and so having a, a relaxed day, kind of changed things at the last minute. Good morning, Anne. Morning, Pauline. We're uh, going to be finalising the time for uh, the climb today. And um, it looks like it's going to be Thursday. So watch this space. Good morning, Judith. If you've got a cup of tea or coffee, have a simultaneous sip. It'll be good to see, particularly those who I haven't seen, that you've, you've remained online uh, for health reasons because of this corona. Um, I can't wait to see you in person, but God bless you, my friends. Oh, that's nice. Morning, Sam. Hey, Jude. Ah, oh, Pete, we are all young in eternity. Absolutely. Amen to that. Well, we'll just wait one or two minutes. Is, is there anything we can be praying for? We'd love to pray for you. And um, yeah, just I'm sure there was something I'm supposed to be praying for today. You know, when you can't think of it. And then I know that as soon as I end, I'll think of it. That's it. Certainly pray for Emma and Michael. They moved in yesterday. The removers uh, moved them in. And uh, they've got a lovely, lovely house in Ellicombe. And uh, thank you to those who spent some time cleaning it just the other day. Um, it, you've left it in a really good shape. And uh, yeah, so they're really excited to move in. And they'll be unpacking boxes for the next however long. Morning, Diana and Christine. Oh, Wendy, your daughter-in-law's got, Vicky has got a baby scan today. Oh, fantastic. Okay, we'll pray. We'll pray for her and any other prayer requests at the end. Shall we pray? That's what we're here for, isn't it? Lord, prayer isn't just a routine. As good as a routine and a habit can be, if that's all it is, then, then Lord, forgive us, because actually prayer is an opportunity to draw close to you and to spend time with you, to talk with you, to listen to you, to learn from you, as well as bringing our lives and our complexities and the people that are praying for to you in a, a wonderful conversation that you answer. So Lord, help us to be still before we even start. Help us to be still and focus on you. Today is Tuesday the 18th of August 
and this week we're exploring the ancient paths of learning in the Old Testament. Today we will P, we will pause, we will R, rejoice, A, ask, oh I missed out reflecting in R, and Y, yielding, saying yes to God. As I enter prayer now, I pause to be still, to recenter my scattered senses on the presence of God. Holy Spirit, my teacher, as I dive into the Bible, would you awaken my heart? expand my mind and shape my identity today. Let me pray that again, because we can. the words happen so quickly, don't they? As I dive into the Bible, would you awaken my heart, expand my mind and shape my identity? we have an expectation that as we as we read God's Word it's more than just nice literature it's the Word of God and the Holy Spirit um, breathed it and speaks through it and therefore it affects our our heart our mind and our identity if we're left unchanged over the course of years by Scripture we kind of missed something the point I choose to rejoice today in God's righteousness and justice, joining with the ancient praise of all God's people in the words of Psalm 89. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Unfailing love and truth walk before you as attendants. Happy are those who hear the joyful call to worship for they will walk in the light of your presence, O Lord. Lord, we hear the joyful call to worship this morning, and whatever our circumstances, be they good or complicated, or even if we're struggling, we choose, whether we feel it or not, as an act of our will to worship you, because you are beyond and above those things, and you are worthy of worship our Creator, our Saviour, the one who loves us eternally. Faithful God, loving Father, today we're reflecting on the passage from the book of 2 Chronicles. Solomon has succeeded his father David to the throne of Israel and in one of his first acts as king he has gone to speak with the Lord, gone to seek the Lord, sorry. That night God appeared to Solomon and said to him, ask whatever you want, ask whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered God, you have shown me great kindness to David my father and you have made me king in his place give me wisdom and knowledge that I may lead this people for who is able to govern this great people of yours God said to Solomon since this is your heart's desire and you have not asked for wealth possessions or honor nor for the death of your enemies and since you have not asked for long life but for wisdom and knowledge to govern my people over whom I've made you king Therefore, wisdom and knowledge will be given you, and I will also give you possessions and honour, such as no king who was before you had, and none after you will ever have. Will have. Sorry, my reading seems to be a bit off this morning. <laughs> king David's reign was known as the Golden Age of Israel. When Solomon succeeded the throne, he was stepping into some pretty big shoes. 
Not only that, but he was charged with fulfilling his father's greatest dream, building a temple for the Lord. When have I, you, faced a challenge that felt truly beyond me, truly beyond you? Have a think. When was the last time you you faced a challenge that was beyond you? You might be living that right now. It might be a little while back. Who was the first person you went to for help? Just take a few moments to think about it. The implicit thing that that last question is getting at is, did we turn to God for help? In, a, in an attitude of prayer, do you feel pressured to, or pressurised to live up to someone else's reputation, success or expectation? Might be a family member, might be a work colleague, I can think of a few people whose shoes I've stepped into, who sometimes I've thought, I'm never going to live up to that. Lord, I ask you to shift my perspective, to relieve the pressure and give me the tools I need to play the part that only I can. Lord, I pray that you release us from the pressure of expectation of uh, when we're stepping into other people's shoes. Help us to turn to you. Help us to find our identity in you, our security in you. Solomon was, uh, he was a newly crowned king, taking on the leadership of a nation. God praised him for seeking wisdom to do his job well. It was a good thing to ask for. So let's pray for those who are in authority over us. Lord, I lift to you those in authority in my country to you today. I ask you to give them the wisdom that they need to lead. Lord, particularly in this time, give our local councillors, business leaders, MPs, those in Westminster, give them real wisdom. Give them compassionate hearts. As we return to the passage, I open my ears to hear God's word and my heart to yield to his will once again. That night God appeared to Solomon and said to him, ask whatever you want me to give to you. And Solomon answered God, you have shown me great kindness, you have shown great kindness to my father David and made him the king in his and made me king in his place. Give me wisdom and knowledge that I may lead this people for who is able to govern this great people of yours? God said to Solomon, Since it, this is your heart's desire and you have not asked for wealth, possessions or honour, nor for the death of your enemies, <coughs> and since you have not asked for long life but for wisdom and knowledge to govern my people over whom I have made you king, therefore wisdom and knowledge will be given to you and I will also give you wealth possessions and honour, such as no king who was before you ever had and none after you will have. Again, that's in 2 Chronicles chapter 1, 
verse 7 to 8 and 8 and 10 to 12. There are many areas of my life where I feel underqualified or out of my depth. But in his great letter, James writes, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Where do I need the Lord's help and wisdom right now? Lord, would you give me your gift of wisdom to help me navigate the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead? Lord, I pray that you give us real clarity of thought on things that have felt too complicated before. We pray that you bring along people, good and godly people who act as a, a mouthpiece of your wisdom. We pray that circumstances may change and help guide the, uh, the path that we're supposed to take. Thank you for the freedom that there is in you. You love our heart that asks for your wisdom. And even if we try something that we've thought you've said and get it slightly wrong, you, you still see our heart that was for you and for your will. just got this sense that some some of you watching now or maybe maybe later I don't know um, have thought that God's will is like this tightrope that we have to walk and and whilst it's true I do believe that God's got a will for our lives absolutely sometimes it's a little bit more like an open field uh, that God has said you can uh, that We've got the opportunity to hold his hand as, as he guides us through it. And sometimes, uh, you know, and we see the destination that, that he's calling us towards. And we, we've got a sense that he's calling us to this thing over here. But I don't quite know how we're going to get there. But we do it with him. And there's, there's meanders and there might be mistakes. And, uh, uh, and then there's times where we're absolutely bang on course. But it's, what matters is the journey. What matters is our heart and is our heart wanting to be obedient to him. If we're going on off, off in a completely different direction and just doing our own thing, then that's not great. No. But if in, in all conscience we're just saying, well, God, will you lead me and guide me? Give me your wisdom. I want to walk in your paths. There's meanders along the way. He can deal with those. And there's, there's just a freedom that comes with going, God, help me to walk in your will. That's all I want. And I think he says, that's all I want to, that you want to walk in my will, I'll guide you. And that, that's my experience with, with mistakes along the way. But what it means is that we're not worrying that we've dropped off the edge of God's will into some precipice that we can never come back from. That's not my experience. He can even use the times when we've, when, when we've fallen and put us back on the path, so to speak. I just want to encourage you, some of you, um, there may be maybe even thought you've blown it and you've missed God's will and your life's gone off in a different direction and he kind of just he can shape it and call us back as long as we're heading towards him ultimately he's the destination does that make sense didn't expect to say that hope it's helpful let's pray Thank you, Father, that you are with me through every challenge that I face. I invite you into every stretching situation, and I ask you to use them to lead me into new learning and greater maturity. Lord, I thank you that you give wisdom generously to all who ask, as it says in James chapter 1, verse 5. 
Today I seek that wisdom afresh. Well, friends, before we finish with uh, just that, the final prayer from Lecture 365, we want to pray. <coughs> Excuse me, got a frog. <coughs> and we to pray for Rachel, who's back from France. Welcome home, but uh, facing quarantine. And um, it was Wendy, wasn't it? Um, I'm just looking for when there's Dilton or Vicky we're praying for. And Sam needing direction. Okay. Father, we pray for Sam as she needs your direction and your wisdom today. We pray that through the means that we've spoken about, through scripture, through common sense, through the, the, the counsel of good friends, and through just a peace in her heart, that step by step she will sense you calling her to do this and that and as she places her life in your hands she will see you guiding her and when she looks back even more clearly she'll see you guiding her steps we pray for rachel uh, as she faces this time uh, at home lord we pray that uh, that actually rather than going stir crazy it'll be a lovely time a lovely time of family and pray for her boys uh, lord we ask that you give them that they're able to settle and you'll just bless them as a family. Lord, we pray for Wendy's, Wendy's daughter-in-law, Vicky, as she has her scan today. We pray that that goes really well and smoothly. They're able to see everything that they need to see on the scan and to, to do a little checkup. I ask that you bless them in anticipation of their new arrival. And Lord, we commit our days to, into your care. Thank you that you promised to walk with us Thank you for your ever-present spirit filling us, guiding us, giving us wisdom and strength and comfort and power. And for Rosie, we pray for wisdom and energy. Bless her. Bless the guests that stay uh, in the houses that she works. Father, help me to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help me to give myself away to others, being kind to everyone I meet. Spirit, help me to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all I do and say. Amen. Amen. Well, my friends, have a lovely day. We are going to, because uh, my Joe's, Joe's side of the family, many of them are here today, so we're going to go and do something nice. And um, having I worked yesterday instead, uh, which is fine. I'm grateful for flexibility. So we're off. I think it might involve beaches and crazy golf and picnics. So it's all good. And um, and I'll sit, but I, I will see you later. Have a good day. God bless. <laughs>